Hey, what's up, guys? Long time no see. Um, it's been a while, so uh, I'm going to talk about history because I got nothing else better to do. Uh, hopefully, you won't get bored because this one's going to get weird. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's about the Crusades, so if you like war stuff, this is right up your alley. And I wrote notes. I got them posted right there. So if you see me look away, I'm reading notes so I don't, you know, mess up my thought pattern. Right. So, um... I just got inspired because I figure, like, you know, things uh, in Eastern Europe, the Balkans, the Baltics, is probably heating up right now. Everyone's sweating because, you know, what's Russia and Ukraine going to do? Are they going to go to war? I don't know. But uh, it's interesting. So, what was happening, like, you know, thousands of years ago? You know, so there's a crusade. That's right. The, the Holy Crusades that we all know about uh, that happened in the Baltics. The Northern Crusades. The Baltic Crusades. Whatever way you call them, it was Crusades, you know. Uh, like I said, we're all pretty much familiar with uh, the Holy Crusades of Jerusalem, you know, the Christian armies invading the Middle East, you know, and, uh, parts of uh, what is Turkey today to try and establish Christian uh, kingdoms in mostly Muslim lands. And for the most part, it worked, but, you know, it was like a seesaw effect back and forth. Um, you know, today, Israel, it's where Jerusalem is, uh, our religions kind of live somewhat happily together not all the time you know notice i use the word somewhat uh you know judaism christianity islam they all kind of are sandwiched in that area and like i said it's you know it's not crazy but you know they somehow coexist um but yeah so well hundreds of years ago obviously we all knew the purpose of the crusades uh and it was the same thing so the you know between the uh, it's like 11th 12th centuries or whatever um uh, yeah, the Pope wanted to organize a crusade in the Baltics. So he was like, well, a lot of these lands aren't quite Christianized yet. So when I mean Baltics, I mean like Latvia, Lithuania, Finland, uh, parts of Russia, Estonia. Uh, some were still pagan. They worshipped the old gods like the Vikings. And some were uh, Orthodox, which some of the Catholic orders you know, were crazy about. They want everyone to be the same thing, unified. And... Uh, these small little, you know, uh, you know, villages just weren't having it, you know. Um, so they put up a fight. Um, the Germans were heavily involved. The uh, Teutonic Knights, which were like a military order. So think of the Templars, just German. And um, they gave the, uh, the Baltic states that, you know, <clears throat> didn't comply with the Pope uh, a run for their money. You know, a lot of battles, a lot of heated battles. A lot of the times, just to... Get the crusaders to stop wreaking havoc on their lands they just kind of got baptized you know like all right we'll do this now but you know we're secretly still gonna worship the old gods i mean as far as i know i think the majority of these countries now are christianized you know and uh, whether it was a gradual effect or just you know over the course of time you know it was bound to happen uh not to say they didn't put up a fight and not to say that i'm sure Maybe deep down in the, you know, the villages that no one talks about, people probably still worship the old gods. I, I see it all the time. I see some Greeks going back worshiping, uh, you know, Zeus and, uh, you know, the whole pantheon. So, you know, whatever, to each his own. But, um, yeah, very little coverage, unless you look for it, about this crusade. The only reason, I said, the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because of the situation that's going on. Um. It doesn't necessarily, you know, uh, directly uh, affect the Baltic states, more so the Balkans and Eastern Europe, but think of it as a trickle-down effect. So what happens in Russia reaches Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe, Baltics, Balkans, so on and so forth. If, you know, Putin decides to go all, you know, blitzkrieg, you know, which I doubt he'll do. Nothing's happening yet, by the way. Uh, I just needed something to kind of engage this conversation. You know, a reason for me to talk about this. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I just think it's interesting that, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ago, you know, war and all bits of warfare were happening, you know, and now we see history kind of repeat itself. Uh, anyway, back to the uh, Northern Crusades. So uh, these countries, um, the Baltic states, the ones that didn't comply, obviously put up a, a you know, huge fight. Some were wins, some were losses. Um, obviously, the losers would have to, 
either give up land, you know, titles, and obviously convert to, you know, whatever the uh, uh, military orders told them to. So most of the time it was, you know, Catholic, you know, and that's just kind of how it went, you know. And a lot of the times, like I said, they would comply just to get them out of their hair. So they didn't really care about whatever doctrine they were preaching. They just wanted the crusaders out. It's like, you guys go somewhere else. Yeah, we'll, we'll do what you say. Just leave, you know. Um, but then you got Russia. So the uh, Livonian Order, which was like a form of the uh, 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 the uh, Tuktonic Knights. They um, um, it was a German order. Fierce fighters, you know, uh, you know, kind of uh, put up a bigger fight than most. Um, just weren't having it. Now the Russians at this time, or the Rus Empire, um, Novograd, I believe, was the region. Uh, were you know Orthodox and. Uh, the uh, Livonians being um, the uh, I'm sorry the sort of the Livonian brothers uh, they were uh, you know Catholic and they just like I said they hold they all had a problem with that Eastern uh, Orthodoxy and just kind of wanted everyone to be the same but never expecting a fierce competition and that's where things got a little uh, hairy there and um, yeah they lost got beat bad and um, uh, it was called the Battle of the Ice. Sounds like something Game of Thrones, I know. And, uh, yeah, so it was fought between... Uh, the area now is, like, between Estonia and Russia. So I'm assuming it was, like... Because a lot of these fights were exaggerated. I'm assuming it was just, like, maybe a layer of ice on top of a lake. And uh, there was a few engagements on top of it. Like, it sounds more epic than it probably looked. But, needless to say, the... Uh, the Rus army, the Russian army, uh, handed out a can of whoop ass on these um, uh, German knights and won. And that pretty much kind of turned the tide in that sense, meaning the uh, Tectonic Order never really kind of like decided to, you know, do anything about it. They kind of just, you know, be like, all right, well, we're done. You know, these guys won. You know, we do, do we really have to go any deeper here? And they just kind of, you know, wrote off their losses and went elsewhere. Um, I think they might even dissolve. I'm not sure, but uh, needless to say, um, it's funny to think how people are like so focused on the Crusades of the Middle East. This one gets totally overlooked. So, and there's so much, so much more better documentaries and people talking about this one. I just want to kind of put my two cents to maybe educate a few people, you know, uh, who like that stuff, who like, you know, warfare. Because it, you know, it's violent, yeah, but it's also interesting, you know. And uh, you'll never see pitch battles like this again, you know, medieval stuff, you know. Today it's all about drones and uh, long distance, but the face an enemy, you know, across from each other it's you, just, you don't hear that anymore and that's cool but um uh yeah the, the uh, that's what the uh, basically the baltic crusades were it was a back and forth game of uh mostly pagan tribes uh eastern orthodox christians against you know german uh catholic order knights that you know wanted to you know pretty much make the entire area submit to the pope and um uh, some some you know success obviously, you know like I said the the play, the Baltics are pretty much Christianized now that's a fact I think you know but like I said I'm, I mean I mean like I said it's it's a big region so some could be Muslim some could be a different form of Christianity who knows you know they're not all Catholic you know um but yeah it's uh, interesting to think that it was such a big deal that the Pope. Like, I'm sure at some, they would have probably just turned over. Like, the Vikings, you know, eventually were like, all right, guys, let, you know, this, this pagan stuff is cool, but let's kind of jump on board here, modernize ourselves. Uh, but, I mean, it's cool seeing people, you know, really fight for what they believe in, you know, and uh, in this case, it was religion, whether it be fighting for the old gods, a different uh, doctrine of Christianity, we're just against the uh, invaders. It's like, what are you doing here? Don't you got something to do in the Middle East? You know? Uh, but yeah. I think it's interesting. And uh, no one really mentions it. So, there you go. The Baltic Crusade. Or the Northern Crusade, if you like. 
I'll leave a bunch of leaks, uh, leaks, a bunch of links uh, at the bottom in case you want to, uh, you know, further educate yourself about a crusade you may have not heard about. But yeah, all right, guys, I'm wrapping it up. Uh, expect more vids, and uh, yeah, we're almost wrapping up February, and to another month. It's just it's crazy. These months just like flying by now. You forget like. I, th I think we're going back to um, Daylight Savings Time, which I'm not happy about, but whatever. Say I love you. All right, thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of it, and uh, yeah, be nice to each other. All right, peace. See you next time.